Hello all, welcome to Keisha's Gossips and Truths. In this video, I will be talking about some of the greatest liars. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. And I am talking about behind the scenes, not, you know, the acting that they portray. Behind the scenes, the real characters. Oh, and it's good. Let's get started. going to go back. Did you know in 1994 with the movie I Love Trouble starring Julia Roberts and Nick Note? Well in this romantic comedy that's about two people solving a mystery and falling in love, well things were less than perfect behind the scenes. Yes, mm -hmm. Roberts and Note didn't get along at all and could hardly stand to be in the same room together. Things got so bad between the pair that they started filming their scenes separately, oh yes, and using stand-ins to create the illusion that the stars were actually together. Yes, it was that bad. Oh, and I'm still not done yet. Oh, their big kiss. Robert wasn't happy about their big kiss, considering her relationship with Note. She couldn't find a way around it. The stars managed to come together in the end to deliver a rom-com worthy smooch. But Robert certainly wasn't happy about that kiss, and she gagged right after it was over. Oh, yes. You all remember the movie Six Degrees of Separation. I just posted something about that on my blog. Well, Will was playing a gay man. Well, he adamantly declined to film a passionate kissing scene with a man. I mean, straight. Instead, he insisted that the scene be filmed from behind, allowing Smith to fake the kiss. However, years after the incident, Smith expressed regret for this decision. He claimed that his choice was immature and that he wasn't emotionally stable enough at the time to perform what was asked of him. He also insinuated that he would make a better and a different choice if he were to film the movie now. I highly doubt that. I think he would still make the same choice considering people think he's gay when he's not. Jennifer Lopez and Matthew McConaughey. I just got through looking at a blog where he was talking about how in love he is with his wife. It's amazing how during this epidemic, couples are forced along so therefore they are able to see the flaws within one another. Some of them fall deeply in love and some just end up falling apart. It's when your love is really tested. Oh yes. Did you all remember that movie with Jennifer Lopez and Matthew McConaughey called Wedding Planner? One of my most romantic movies I've seen and I still watch right to this day. At the time I had a huge crush on Matthew until I saw his lack of lips. And that's a no-no for me. I love me a sexy chest, a smile, a neck, because I love necks. Yes, I'm like a vampire. Like the bite me, lick and kiss. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Anyway. <laughs> but there's a no-no for slit lips. I'm a kisser. I have lips. And I don't like the kissing man where it feels like I'm kissing his face. So, that infatuation was gone after that realization, okay? Anyways, it was reported that Jennifer found Matthew McConaughey very irritating and obnoxious during rehearsals were the worst. Oh, you all should know how serious Jennifer is is. I mean, she's a very serious person. She takes her craft very, very seriously. And she's very, try to amplify that by two with her dancing. And yeah, so mix that with dancing and work. So it's like, okay, we have to get down and dirty. I mean, she's really serious. Like it was so bad, she avoided a second movie with him later on. Oh yes, the movie with Kate Hudson and Matthew, you know, 10 Ways to Lose a Guy. Yes, I love that movie as well. That was supposed to be Jennifer Lopez and Man, but she decided to do Made in Manhattan, Angel Eyes, and so on. She was booked, okay? And working with Matthew McConaughey wasn't just on the playing cards, okay? It was a deal breaker anyway. However, years later, they ran into each other and they reminisced on old times, had a few laughs, ha ha ha. And guess what Matthew said? Mm -hmm. Yet confirming what I said. A lot of fun making that, he continued sarcastically. The star extremely complimentary toward his co-star always called her quad threat. What does she not do? That girl works her backside off on everything. She does not just show up and wing it all. She's like a clockwork. Just hammers it and knocks it out. 
he said of the shooting star. That pretty much confirmed everything I just said. Mm -hmm. Anyway, moving along here. Finding a moment that gives us all something to look forward to, like in maybe a two. After watching Matthew's video, Jen replied, Let's do it again soon. <laughs> just kidding. Um, does that mean there would be a wedding plan or two? Or was she just being sarcastic? I mean, we need answers. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I know many of you think that the only thing that the famous Kardashian and Jenners will lie about is their plastic surgeries, but I hate to break it to you. These famous plastic silicones will lie about anything. For example, Kim lied about not having a sex tape. Back in 2007 in an interview with Complex Magazine, yes, this big reality TV star was asked about this sex tape with Ray J. She denied it and told the magazine this. There is no sex tape. Ray J not that kind of guy. Who would do something for revenge? There is no amount of money that could ever convince me to release any tape. Even if I had one, I don't need the money. A few months later, the magazine asked her about it again, since at that point the truth came out and the video dropped. Kardashian responded, mm -hmm. I apologize for not publicly being honest, but no one wants to hope that's the truth, and you hope that it would never come out. So I feel like at the time, that's all that I could have said. In this case, I think the lie makes sense. That's such a personal thing that, of course, Ellen DeGeneres. Well, the 62 year old, yes, 62 years old, that is correct. Wow, she's really up there. Anyway, well, it has been said that Ellen loves to look young, as you know, and she loves to look like a boy. Helen, she loves to look young, and she loves to look like a boy, which is a little bit hypocritical, considering she seemed to have a thing against um, transsexuals and things of that nature, so I don't know what's going on in her mind. Yeah, she's making Aquarius look really, really bad. As you all know, Ellen is married, and she's married to a much younger partner, and this person, as you know, is... Porter de Rossi, who is known to be very down to earth and friendly and, may I say, bisexual. Something older and maybe insecure Ellen doesn't like. You see, the host is 15 years older than her wife and she wants to look younger, so she allegedly decided to go under the knife repeatedly. It was leaked that Ellen DeGeneres is a plastic surgery junkie in disguise. Oh, yes, she's had plastic surgery. And it's all because she's unhappy about looking older, especially when compared to. Portia Durati, who looks gorgeous, yet the generous glowing appearance was reportedly not just TV magic. She allegedly got a lift and Botox, which drove her hair and makeup staff nuts. I mean, it's being reported that it takes about two and a half hours to give Ellen that peaches and cream glow that her fans love. Oh, and she's known to get little re-ups, you know, little post-Botox regularly. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Well, that's it. Let me know your thoughts below. I hope you guys are entertained. This is a little distraction from all the chaotic mess that's going around right now. Stay tuned for the next video because I will be talking about hidden secrets and the untold stories of Michael Jackson from when he was a childhood and why he was terrified of sex. Oh, yes. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and hit that bell so you get notifications for when I do post more videos. Love you all. See you all later. Bye. Do you have a mentor or someone who inspired you? Uh, yes, I do. Um, Barry Gordy, Diana Ross, um, Thomas Edison, Walt Disney, James Brown, Jackie Wilson. And what have you learned from them? I learned a lot from them about how to be a visionary, how to be creative, how to be persistent, how to be determined. Not to have a will of iron and to never give up no matter what, you know? Oh, that's good. And what was your first job in the music industry and how did you get it? First job, probably, gee, I don't remember back that far. I was around six <laughs> years old. <laughs> it was, uh, the first time you... Mr. Lucky's, I think it was a club. Yeah, Mr. Lucky's. We performed there. And how did you get the job? I don't know. My father would know. I was too little. <laughs> what was your first break and the first great thing that ever happened to you? 
the real big break was when Motown signed us. Uh -huh. We auditioned in Detroit, and Barry Gordy invited, I mean, all of our favorite stars that we saw as kids in this little town, Indiana. Uh -huh. Diana Ross, Smokey Robinson, uh -huh. you know, The Miracle, The Temptations, and uh, Stevie Wonder, everybody was there. And it was next to his indoor pool. It's this huge mansion, marble everywhere. And we performed, and they just went crazy. They loved it. He says, boys, you're signed. Really? Yeah. And, we and you remember signed. that day? Oh, I remember it. And, and, okay, and what elements of your job make you want to go to work every day when you do? I want to work every day. Just the idea of creating worlds. It's like taking a canvas an empty canvas, you know, clean slate, right? And give you paint, and you just color and paint and create worlds, right? You know, I just love that idea. Anything, and and have people see it, and they're awe inspired, right? After they see it. Okay, what qualities most help you get to where you are today? Faith and determination, and practice. Right, practice makes perfect. Okay, right, what would you have done differently in your career if you knew? Than what you know now. Well, that difference. Uh, let me see. If you knew what you knew now, yeah, I know. Practice more. Practice more. <laughs> I practiced a lot. <laughs> you practiced a hell of a lot. <laughs> but you're even to practice more. Oh my God. Okay. What is your greatest lesson learned? Not to trust everybody. Mm. Not to trust anybody in the industry. There's a lot of sharks, and record companies steal, they cheat, mm -hmm. you have to audit them, mm -hmm. and it's time for artists to take a stand against them, mm -hmm. because they totally take advantage of them, totally. They forget that it's the artists who make the company, not the company who make the artists. Without the talent, the company would be nothing but just hardware, I mean, just, mm -hmm. you know, and... Uh, it takes that real good talent that the, that the public wants to see. Mm -hmm. What are your, some of your favorite albums? My favorite album would be uh, Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker Suite, uh, Claude Debussy's uh, Greatest Hits, which is, you know, Claire de Lune and Arabesque, mm -hmm. and Afternoon of a Fawn. Mm -hmm. um, I love Marvin Gaye's What's Going On. Mm -hmm. James Brown Live at the Apollo, um, Sound of Music, I love Rodgers and Hammerstein. I love the great show tune writers very much, and I love Holland Dozier Holland from Motown. They were geniuses. So many great writers.